yo 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 what's up all time for a skull video check it out this is a uh, this is a ramelay sheep stinks like ramelay today I'm using my silverware my Havilon 70 XT blade and I'm gonna peel him back if you don't want to see it don't watch otherwise here we go right up the nose first cut reconvene tomorrow because we're losing light. step on a sheep is we want to get the horns off so don't worry about having the whole skull underwater typically they won't fit until we get the horns off Dora. okay y'all it's hammer time I like to talk a little trash when I get them out of there too First one coming out here is about to get a beaten. It's not true. It's the first time I ever did it. y'all with the horns off we're gonna wash this skull using a little 1500 psi power washer you want to spray into every hole and every orifice anywhere there's meat or tissue make it go away It's extremely important to cut the horn core. What that does is allows the heat of the boil to get in and penetrate all those porous areas. Lots of stuff lives and grows in those horn cores. So you need to be able to wash them clean and it makes for a really nice fit when you go to put the horns back on. How about a little more washing?
I shouldn't have done three sheep at the same time. I'm snaking drains, I'm mowing lawns, I just cleaned out and defrosted the freezer. I always take on too much. So, these things are about 70% done, but I've boiled so long in this water, I don't like that water anymore. And I'm at the tail end of a batch of peroxide. So I am just gonna sacrifice that peroxide for the final whitening mix and just dump it. So uh, I'm gonna pull these all out. They'll all fit in a smaller pot, which will boil faster, less product. And I'm gonna hit them hard with the peroxide. Sheep and goats, you can just really, really boil them, boil them, boil. They've been in there for like two hours, just at a full boil, doesn't hurt them. Um, the reason I don't give you times, you know, like, oh, boil for 45 minutes is because if you got a, a young lamb or a ewe and I told you to do that, it would literally fall apart. So the younger the animal, the shorter the boil time, the older, the longer. And then when you get that shock absorber on the back of their head, that big calcified stuff, it's just a mess to try and squirt and spray. I, I think you saw me doing it. So just do the majority and let the peroxide do the work. With the skulls back down in the pot, I'm adding the White Bone Creations whitening mix that consists of three quarters water or 75% water, 25% hydrogen peroxide, a product called Aqua Silk. I can no longer find it on Amazon, so I've put a Google link in the description. I bring it to a boil, then pull it out and wash everything that was still on the skull off and then put it back in there for a quick minute to whiten. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You guys know I'm always preaching to clean out every hole in orifice. Here's a real good look. The hole at the top of the screen right there next to the nasal cavity. As I squirt in there, you can actually see that tendon nerve or whatever's in there come shooting out. If you're blowing into a hole on a skull, there should be an exit somewhere else on that skull. It's a great rule of thumb. Most of the dark that comes up, people send me questions. Oh man, I got a dark spot here or a dark spot there. That's a hidden hunk of goo in that skull. I have literally broken out parts of internal bones to get to pockets of tissue. You gotta get it clean. I don't care what anybody else says. Clean is number one. We're putting these things in our homes. Last thing, I have always preached removing the auditory bull or the ear butt. I am 100% drilling them now. I love the smooth round finish that it creates. On small animals, I'm using a 5 8 wafer bit and I just stick it in there. I'm just trying to break it free and then I wallow that hole so it has nice smooth edges. It's a much more beautiful finished look. With everything that's attached on the back of the head and behind the eye sockets that grabs onto the brain, now that all those areas are clean, I can reach up in there with a set of forceps and just pull that hunk of brain you see rambling around in there out. So yes, before I get the question, everything comes out, including the brains. washed as clean as I can get it so there's a few little dark spots that's where the peroxide has not touched back in the product until everything turns white as things finish whitening I do a real good scrub one last wash on all the horns in and out and then I set them in front of a fan to dry 
All right, y'all, I'm embarrassed because somehow I knocked everything out of focus. But what I'm doing is I'm coating the horns in and out and the skull with flooring mop and glow to seal the bone from keeping any dust from settling in. Plus it gives it a real nice kind of uh, sheen and feel. Now, let's go to the next piece. Making sure that the horns and skulls are dry with all the mop and glow, I'm gonna adhere the horn back on the horn core using automotive Bondo. I like to dry fit the horns first, meaning I put them on with no Bondo to make sure that they will slide all the way into place and I have right and left correct. Now, already having done that, I'm gonna put a real thin, smooth coat of Bondo around the horn core, not the inside of the horn, and then slide them nice and tight into place. Remember, you don't need a ton of Bondo. It's gonna represent that membrane that was between the horn core and the horn, so it just needs to be a thin little layer. Hey y'all, the skull business sometimes feels like you're just managing different problems. So I don't know the backstories on these animals, but I think they came from a, uh, a fenced operation hunting and I'm assuming they're, I'm assuming they're old livestock that's made its past its prime so they were hunted or shot or whatever. And when you get into that, you get a lot of animals that are, um, have some sort of either genetic problem or, or some sort of physical problem with them it's why they're not they don't have the same amount of value so this particular sheep had a, I don't know if you could see it when I knocked the horns off but this whole horn was damaged and the horn core something was going on it was bad and I imagine that's why this sheep was moved along so this one is split there's almost nothing to this thing you can see this is all worn and because of this big dish and the horn core being larger here I had to cut everything way back it's a pain in the tail and the reason you dry fit, so if I put this together like this, there's this huge open piece where you can see the horn core, right? So I'm gonna bondo it, and I don't wanna see a bunch of pink bondo right there. You can do two things. You can use a white hardener, that will help, but I'm just gonna bondo the backside, and then when I get it together, I'm gonna take a zip tie, and I'm gonna suck it together as tight as I can but ultimately this is all rock so we're trying to make do um, anyway you want to be cognizant of that visually when you're putting everything back together let's uh let's give it a go All right, y'all, let's close it out. I'm gonna post this video tonight. So I gotta get to cutting and editing and put some beats against the skull washing, dropping bombs like every hole, every orifice. I'm gonna move these out of the way so you get a clean look at one. That's the Ramelay. It's a beautiful critter, like any of them. If they're treated right, they turn out amazing. I'm gonna encourage you to try and do your own skulls. You learn a lot about the animal. It keeps you in touch with nature, and what goes on in their brain. No pun intended. Actually, it's completely intended. Anyway, next Friday, how to clean a Spanish goat skull. And tonight, the Ramelay. Thank you for watching.